So I've been assembling another batch of the ESB32 rainbows. So the PCBs, they're all done by PCB Way. You can check out a link to them in the description. They do the initial PCB, the UV silk screen printing, and some of the components. And then final assembly is done here in Scotland, where we also do some QA checks. So it'll be interesting to have a look at the three QA failures and see what's gone wrong. So we have one board where we've got no sound coming out. We have one board with a dodgy keyboard, so for some reason the touchpads A to G are not working. And we have another board where there's no USB, so we plug it in and the ESP32 doesn't show up. So maybe we'll start off with the no sound one. Um, I think this might be a trivial fix, but let's have a look. So I do have an SD card here that has some files on it, so we'll just power up this board. And let's try out the video player, because I put a video file onto the SD card. Well, there's definitely no sound coming out, so I think you can hear that. Um, now, all the audio section is around here, so that's interesting. We put a bit of pressure on the headphone jack, and we get sound coming out. So I think this might be quite an easy fix. Uh, let's get this under the microscope and have a look at what's going on. Um, but yeah, we can, can get sound just by pushing here. Now the audio does go via the headphone jack. That's how when you plug in a headphone jack, the audio stops coming out of the speaker because it's routed via this component and there's a switch inside that disconnects the audio when you plug a headphone so uh, jack in. So let's get the microscope out and see what's going on. Right, well under the microscope, the issue is pretty clear. So this pad has been lifted up as has this one. This has become disconnected, and so has this. So that definitely doesn't pass the solid test. So the only connection we've got is this one here. But I might be able to connect the pad, so I can still see a bit of copper here and here. So maybe we can actually join that up and um, get it nicely working. I don't think we can send this out to anyone once it's fixed. The uh, It's pretty damaged, so... What I'll do is I'll just fix it up for fun and see if the sound works again. So let's get the old soldering iron out and see if we can um, fix this. So let's squirt a bit of flux around the situation. So let's, um, let's solder up these other ones first, because if we can do those, then it will stay down in the right position. So let's get in there and melt that. So that's actually stuck down on that side. Why don't we do the other side and then we can have a look at those two ground pads. So it's actually stuck down. Um, I wonder if we can now go back to this one and maybe we can try fixing it up to the existing ground plane. There is a bit of copper there, so it might work. Yeah, I think I think we've got a connection there. That might work. So a slightly better look in the microscope. I think that might be a bit better. That should be good enough. It doesn't look very neat. There's a big blob of solder on that. But let's see if we've actually fixed it. We've also melted a bit of plastic. But as I say, we're not going to send this out to anyone. It's more for fun. So let's power it up and see if we've fixed our problem. Okay, so I've powered it up. Let's turn it on. Go to the video player, and yes, we've got sound coming out. So I wonder if we should check the headphone jack, see if that works. Let's plug in some headphones. So that's correct, sound should stop coming out of the speaker. And um, I wonder if you can actually hear this. where the actual microphone is um, oh, I can put it up here so hopefully you can hear sound coming out of the headphones so it's fixed but as I say we're not going to send this out to anyone it's not really um, it's a bit of a bodge job so but we can use this for spares so the board works perfectly fine or the keyboard works so if we um, 
exit from this. So if we go about, go into test mode, then everything else works, the keyboard is all fine. Um, so yeah, good spares board. We'll use this for repairing other boards if we need to. So on to the next problem board, no USB. Now I can see I've got it plugged in. If I turn it on, we get 3.3 volts. So I can see that with that LED and we can double check with our test points. So if we just go to these test points here, ground 3.3, then we've got 3.3 volts, no problem. So let's get this under the microscope. You need to look around here. The USB pins are these two here and it goes through, there's a ESD protection chip and then the socket. So it's pretty simple. Should be quite easy to troubleshoot. Okay, so I've managed to fit it all under the microscope. So we've got the USB socket here, the ESD protection chip, and here's the two pins on the ESP32 that are the USB pins. USB? USB pins. So let's just try buzzing this out. So let's, uh, let's get a probe on this pin. So that should go to the leftmost pin here. So that's fine. And then it should come through to this pin here, which is also fine. And then it goes up to the pin on the USB socket. Um, so that seems fine. Let's try the other one. So that's the other USB pin. So that should come to the right hand side of this chip. It's coming in there. It should come out on this pin seems to be coming in there and then it should go to this pin here and it's not that's interesting so actually uh, mm, so if we probe the actual pad there's no continuity so it feels like this end pin is not soldered properly let's zoom down on that and see if we can see what's going on okay so i've really zoomed in on that IC. Uh, let's do the old solid test. It does look like um, some dodgy soldering here. So let's see, that one seems solid. Seems solid. Well, that one does seem solid, but the solder doesn't look great. Um, in fact, I think it's not even on the pad, is it? So this I see looks like it's kind of missed the pad a bit. Um, so I wonder if we melt all the solder and try and reposition it, or maybe this is a job for the hot air gun. I've decided to use my mini hot plate instead. So I've got the, uh, the board balanced on the hot plate. Um, I've put a bit of flux on and we'll just try and reflow the solder and then we'll just jog the IC into position and get it on the actual pads. So hopefully this will melt soon and we can just move it into position. Okay, I think we've got that. Seems to be melting the solder. So let's just give this a quick nudge and see if we can shift it into position. Yeah, I think that looks good. So perfect. Uh, we'll take this off the boil and then do another probe and see if we've fixed it. First off, let's give it a quick clean so we can see what we're doing. Bit of 99% uh, pure isopropyl alcohol just to clean off uh, some of that flux. Can't have too much alcohol. It is uh, Christmas after all, or New Year. New Year's Day in fact here. So. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, anyway, that's, that's cleaned that up sufficiently. So let's do a bit of probing, see if we've fixed our issue. So let's zoom out a bit. So I think it was this one. And we need to go to this pin here. Looks good. And then this pin here on the USB. Excellent. That's now hooked up. Let's just double check the other one. Yep, it's good. So I'm going to program this and we'll see if it works. So we've got the board plugged in. Um, let's just see 
if it shows up. Oh, there we go. Showing up perfectly. So I'm on the ESP32 Rainbow website. So we can just go to firmware, programming an ESP32 Rainbow, get the latest firmware, connect and upload. Okay, we're programming. And that's our program successfully. So back on the bench, let's power things up. Our display works, and we can probably remove this no USB now. Let's just go into test mode. Yeah, everything seems to be working. So that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if we've got any games. No, no games. But we do have the video, so we can double check. Got sound. It's working nicely. Okay, that's board. that board is fixed. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so on to our next uh, repair. Dodgy keyboard A to G. So let's remove the post-it note and then go into test mode. Well, in fact, I can't go into test mode because the A key doesn't work. Let's use the arrow keys. Go into about and then, yep. So keyboard is definitely behaving in a weird way. So pushing T should take us into test mode, um, but it's not. Can I actually get into one of the spectrum modes? So I need. Oh, no, that's not working either. Okay, let's get this under the microscope and see what's going on. So these are the analog multiplexer ICs. Now, most of the pins they're connected to are along here. So, so, so I'm looking just visually, looks a bit dodgy along the bottom here. So let's get it under the microscope and see what's going on. So just looking at this under the microscope, I think we can see the issue. The soldering is all a bit uh, wonky along here. Actually, I can see this pin here is also looking a bit dodge. It does seem to be connected. Um, I think it's all okay along here and along the top here. So let's just retouch all of these pins along the bottom here. And that should hopefully fix our problem. And of course, finally, a bit of 99% pure alcohol. Okay, let's get this powered up and see if it works now. So we're on. Let's go into the test screen. So there's no SD card, but we don't really worry about that. Actually, let's, let's put one in. Let's really check if this does work. So reboot. Okay, about. Test. Okay, SD card working, and do the keys work? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. QWERTY UIOP work, A works, that was the fault before. Yeah, we're looking good. Keyboard is fully functional. So it's just some dodgy soldering on the bottom of the USB32 module. So problem solved. That's the last of our dodgy boards. So I think this one could actually be sent out. I'll do another double check of all the soldering around this area, just make sure it is good. But um, everything works, sound all works, so not bad.